Hello, I'm Darm again. The topic for today's video comes from questions asking what is meant by the term DARVO. In this video, I'm going to outline what that term means. I'm going to look at some of the common phrases and tactics that are employed so that you can recognize it. I'm also going to look at why narcissistic people use this particular strategy, as well as the long-term effects it can have on others. Now, you might not necessarily be familiar with the term DARVO, but if you are or have been in a relationship or an environment with a narcissistic person, you'll probably recognize it. Narcissistic people often use this in, in their relationships to control and coerce others. That being said, sometimes you see it used in organizations, cults, movements to paint whistleblowers as conspiracy theorists, extremists with a particular agenda. But for today, I'm just going to focus on it when it's used in a relationship with a narcissistic person. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. So if you find this video interesting, please consider subscribing to my channel. But just to remind you, this video is for information purposes only and is not a substitute for support from a mental health professional. So the term DARVO is an acronym which stands for Deny, Attack and Reverse Victim and Offender. The term was first coined in the 1990s by a psychologist named Jennifer Freyd. It refers to a form of manipulation which is aimed at shifting the focus away from any wrongdoing and to avoid any consequences, and attacking the victim in ways that allows them to switch roles. The aggressor becomes the victim, the victim becomes the aggressor. It's a form of gaslighting in the sense that the person using the strategy rewrites the narrative rewrites the version of events and in many cases fools others into believing their version of events. For instance, they might even claim they've been wrongly accused by someone who is malignant, insane and therefore gain sympathy and support from others. And it tends to happen whenever a victim of abuse, mistreatment or any kind of wrongdoing confronts or challenges their abuser. So let's first of all look at the denial. Now you might not hear the following word for word but you may recognize it, it may sound familiar. Now denial can take many forms. There's denial it happened, there's denial of the severity or the intent, there's also justification of the behavior. Now outright denial might just sound like that didn't happen or that didn't happen the way you say it did. The narcissistic person may become righteously indignant. How dare you accuse me of that? That's not the kind of person I am. Everybody knows I'm not like that. The narcissistic person becomes outraged and accuses their victim of lying and attacking their character. Any aggression that follows is portrayed as them defending themselves against unfair accusations. Another form of denial is confusion, sometimes referred to as toxic amnesia. They can't remember what they did. They might claim they've been under a lot of pressure at work. They're very busy with this, that and the other thing. They may claim that they're being blamed on so many things and have to listen to so many lies and accusations, they just can't keep up. Victims will hear things like, when did this happen? What are you talking about? Why are you bringing that up now? Why would I do that? They behave as if this is news to them. Well, the victim tries very hard to explain pretty much what the abuser already knows. They may even give concrete examples, but they are met with more bewilderment and confusion. And quite often, the victim might become frustrated, so they are accused of being aggressive or being crazy. Then there is minimizing the victim's experience. Get over yourself, it wasn't that bad, you're just too sensitive, it was only a joke, or sure you like me calling you that. The victim is left feeling devalued and invalidated. The narcissist may tell other people, we only had an argument, all couples argue, they're just blowing things way out of proportion. Now, if the victim tries to explain to others what happened, remember, they have probably been told a sanitized version. So the more they try to explain themselves, the more they try to make themselves understood. They may sound as if they are exaggerating or engaging in a smear campaign, which the narcissist has probably warned them about. Then there is justifying their actions. Well, I had to because, and it could be, you know, it was for your own good. It was for the greater good or... I'm trying to make this relationship work and all you do is criticize and attack me. Victim is led to believe that they maybe are being unreasonable for not accepting the behavior, sometimes even questioning themselves, am I really just being too sensitive? Or is my reaction out of proportion to this? 
So they were some common examples of denial. Now let's look a bit closer at, at the attacks. The attacks are aimed at deflecting away from their own behavior and onto the character, behavior, motives, sometimes even the mental health of someone else, usually their victim. It's a way of diminishing the victim's credibility. All evidence is criticized, refuted. The narcissist may tell their victim to say again what it is exactly they're being accused of. Now, if the victim does not repeat the same thing word for word, the narcissistic person may claim, that's not what you said a moment ago. That's not what you said yesterday or last week. The victim is accused of making things up. They're accused of lying. They're accused of changing their story. So we end up trying to defend themselves against errors they never made or lies they never told in the first place. The victim's character, their morality is brought into question. The narcissistic person will use any indiscretion, mistake, fault their victim has ever made as evidence of their guilt, their sinister agenda. Any personal information or secrets that may have been shared as a couple, they are used, they are twisted and used against the victim to discredit and shame them. They will throw things up like, well, sure wasn't your dad an alcoholic you have always struggled with? What about that time you lied to your parents when you were 10? They will bring up other times their victim had the back down. Sure, you admitted you were wrong that last time. Now, if there is more than one person challenging or confronting the narcissist, the narcissistic person might claim that these accusations are part of a hate campaign, an agenda to destroy them somehow by people who are malignant, envious. They might claim it's a witch hunt. Now let's look closer at the victim and offender rules, the switching of those rules and why they seem to work. Narcissistic people seem to have this belief that the more people they tell, the more true something becomes. They tell their version to anyone who will hear them. They will tell it in public, they will tell it to strangers, they will put it out there on social media. The victims are accused of gaslighting, spreading rumours, character assassination. Their motives, their mental health is called into question. The abuser is a falsely accused innocent victim. It also works in the sense that the narcissist doesn't have to accept responsibility or accountability for their actions. The true victim ends up being blamed and shamed. They are vilified and attacked for pointing out the bad behaviour and the effect it has on them. Darvo also relies on emotion rather than facts. The narcissist relies on their victim's fears the fear of being criticized, the fear of being rejected, the fear of public opinion, and the fear of being punished by everyone, not just the narcissist. It also relies on discrediting the victim. It is the victim who is a narcissist, a psychopath, they're an alcoholic, they have anger issues. There can be threats of consequences if the victims were to speak up. There may be threats of violence, threats to destroy property, there could be threats to tell other people about their dark secrets. There may be threats to go to the authorities to report any false allegations. Some victims of narcissistic abuse often remain silent because they have seen how the narcissist has reacted any time anyone else ever spoke up against them. And the long-term effect of this tactic can have victims feeling isolated, invalidated and shamed. Living in fear of doing or saying anything that might be used against them at a later date. Victims can feel both helpless and hopeless to do anything about their situation and it has a detrimental effect on their decision making, their self-efficacy, their self-esteem and their confidence. It can have an effect on their relationships with others in friend groups, productivity at work even suffers. They may be reluctant to have any future relationships, even friendships and becoming hypervigilant and having difficulties with trust can also lead to increased anxiety, constant stress, depression and trauma. They become afraid to speak up so accept responsibility for everything that goes wrong in that relationship and for how they are treated. Remember also many narcissistic people project their own stuff onto their victims. That's why I think we're living in a generation of educated narcissists at the moment. They often claim that their victims are narcissists. It's the victims who are gaslighting, using Darvo, they're uh, using reactive abuse while they are claiming to be traumatized. And many victims fear that they will be blamed for being the abuser. So to summarize, the intent of Darvo 
is to silence victims, to silence them through denial, confusion, invalidation, minimizing, or intimidation. While they're doing that, they're attacking the, the evidence, the victim's credibility, their claims, and also claiming that they are the victim while they're doing it. Once you recognize the pattern, like I said earlier, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Now, there are different ways to learn how to manage yourself when someone is using the Darvo method. If that's something you'd like me to cover in a future video, please let me know in the comment box below. But in the meantime, if you have any experience or any ideas that you have found helpful to keep yourself safe in a situation like that, if you feel comfortable enough, please share them in the comments section. Someone else reading them might benefit from your wisdom and your experience. And I would also invite you to think about the long-term effects of Darvo and being in a narcissistic relationship. Maybe reach out to someone, a mental health professional, a support group, an organization which can help. And I will put some useful contacts in the description of this video. But if you find this video interesting, if you find it helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. And until next time, thanks for watching. You know, Charles Baudelaire once said, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. But according to Ken Ami, the second greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he is the good guy.